I conceived the idea of constructing an automaton which would mechanically represent me and which would respond, as I do myself, but of course in a much more primitive manner, to external influences. Such an automaton evidently had to have motive power, organs for locomotion, directive organs and one or more sensitive organs as adapted as to be excited by external stimuli. This machine would, I reasoned, perform its movements in the manner of a living being, for it would have all the chief mechanical characteristics or elements of the same. There was still the capacity for growth, propagation, and above all, the mind which would be wanting to make the model complete. But growth was not necessary in this case, since the machine could be manufactured full-grown, so to speak. As to the capacity for propagation, it would likewise be left out of consideration, for in the mechanical model it merely signified a process of manufacture. Whether the automaton be of flesh and bone or of wood and steel, it mattered little, provided it could perform all the duties required of it like an intelligent being. To do so, it had to have an element corresponding to the mind, which would affect the control of all its movements and operations, and cause it to act in any unforeseen case that might present itself, with knowledge, reason, judgment and experience. But this element I could easily embody in it by conveying to it my own intelligence, my own understanding. So this invention was evolved, and so a new art came into exist, need for which this name teleautomatics has been suggested, which means the art of controlling the movements and operations of distance automatons. By the simple means described, the knowledge, experience, judgment, the mind, so to speak, of the distant operator was embedded in that machine, which was thus enabled to move and to perform all its operations with reason and intelligence. It behaved just like a blindfolded person, obeying directions received through the ear. The automatons so far constructed had borrowed minds, so to speak, as each merely formed part of the distant operator who conveyed to it his intelligent orders.